happy one year birthday to the copper dishwasher. I did not want to have to demo all the tile in the shower, all the shower walls in. So then when you pull it all out, it comes out as one. Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Drew here from Lone Fox and today we are not DIYing anything new. We are actually going to be looking at some of my most viral DIY projects that are still in my home right now and rating them on a scale of one to 10. Because I have been sharing so many DIYs since purchasing this home. And something I realized that before buying my house, I actually was constantly moving. Like I always loved moving apartments, getting to redecorate and finding a new space and a new bedroom. And a lot of the times I never was able to share with you guys my DIYs or things I was kind of working on a year later. But now that I own a home, some of my most viral projects I've ever shared since being a content creator per se have been in this home. And I actually recently shared a couple of short form videos on Instagram and TikTok where I rated my old projects a year later. One of them got almost 13 million views. The other one has a little over 2 million views right now. And it got me to thinking that maybe I'll do a longer version where I can actually tell you guys my thoughts about these projects, kind of things I might change, things I love about them, give you a rating on them, and if they are actually worth it. Turn the YouTube channel because on the short form content, I kind of just gave it like a quick rating. And I thought giving you some intel on each of these projects, if I still love them. And also so many of you have constantly asked me how some of these are withholding, if they're still in my home. So if you're not already, make sure to subscribe to my channel because I've already shared all five of the projects I'm going to be sharing in this video today on my channel in the past. But we are gonna be taking a look at them, some of them up to almost two years after and see how they are withholding. We're starting off with a bang here because I've had so many questions since wrapping my dishwasher in copper, how it still looks. And I actually uploaded this on my YouTube channel June 3rd of 2023. So it's been a little over a year now. It's probably been like 15, 16 months, I'd say. But essentially I took a sheet of copper that I ended up ordering off of a restoration website. And I'll link that below if you are curious. And this was a sheet of patinated copper, essentially, that I ended up adhering to the front of my dishwasher, cutting out some holes for the lights, removing the handle, on. I even wrapped the copper around the edges of the dishwasher and then I reinstalled the front face back onto my dishwasher. And I know that kind of sounds like a little challenging, but if you were to watch the full video, it was not too bad. Actually, it took me around maybe maximum two hours from start to finish. And if you just wear like a good pair of protective gloves, that's all you need. You are good to go. It is definitely a doable project, especially if you have a dishwasher that's super simple and streamlined on the front with not many buttons or dials. It makes it so easy because appliances can be so bland and I loved this project. So let me share with you what it looks like one year later. Happy one year birthday to the copper dishwasher. And I honestly think she is looking quite gorgeous if you ask me. Really bright in here at the moment. So I'm trying to adjust the lighting properly for you guys. But besides that, the copper dishwasher is looking beautiful. She is shining, shimmering, and splendid, but she does have some additional patina because if you recall, this was actually a reactive metal. And what I mean by reactive metal, same as the handles here, same as the hardware on my sink, this is unlacquered brass. All of this is unlacquered brass. The sheet of metal that I got to actually wrap the copper dishwasher was a reactive piece of metal, meaning that anything that touches it, it can react with it. So that's why there's some additional patina, which I really like because I feel like it adds signs of wear and use. To be completely honest, I'm not sure if you could seal it or you could probably find a piece of copper sheeting maybe on their website that's not reactive and that would allow it to stay. It's like same exact form as it comes. On the top left corner, here you can kind of see some of the more heavy patina and that's because I think the on and the power buttons actually right here so I think the water just kind of drips from when you are constantly utilizing this main section and like turning it on and off and one of the main reasons I added the copper dishwasher was because I had a lot of copper on the other side of the kitchen which I was just cooking something but as you can see there's lots of dishes over here or copper pots I should say um, and so I wanted to kind of bring a little copper over to this side and I'm loving it so far it has been such a great great dishwasher. And something else I can say that's great is I would not change anything from the actual tutorial of this video. Like everything has stayed so nicely intact. Like all of my corners are still nicely pressed. Everything is just so secured down. The copper dishwasher is probably one of my favorite projects. I would give this a 10 out of 10 for sure. It's also probably one of my most viral projects, which is really fun. And a lot of people have done such an incredible job recreating it. And I'm pretty sure that the company that sells the copper, they also have other metals so you might want to consider checking it out. Winnie, what do you think of it? Don't you like it? He's so pretty, just like the dishwasher. 
Project number two I'm going to be sharing with you is when I mounted my TV on an artist easel. And I actually don't think I included this in a YouTube video. I might have included it in like a little bit of the living room makeover that I did, but I actually created an entire short form content piece. And Justin was shopping at an estate sale one weekend and he sent me a photo of a vintage easel. And I was like, oh my gosh, that is massive. It is perfect for a large TV. And I knew I didn't want to mount my TV above the fireplace in my living room because the fireplace is so beautiful and I didn't want to distract from that. So I ended up actually mounting my TV on an easel and I put a frame around it and everything. It turned out so stunning. And I want to share with you guys what it's looking like a year later because I actually did do a couple of tweaks to it to make it a little bit more my style. We are now in the upper living room and this is the TV on the easel that I was talking about. And I love this project. I think it's just such a cool way to display a TV. It's also kind of unique as well because you're able to roll it in and out of spaces. A lot of these older easels have wheels on them and sometimes we'll move the TV from this side over to this side per se. Like if we have more people over, disregard all the items on the coffee table, but I kind of love how the TV almost falls out of sight um, because if I had it on the fireplace, it just be so prominent. If you're curious of how I attach the TV to it, I actually just cut a one by six down and then I screwed the one by six to the easel itself. So it was really fastened and attached all the way across. Then I mounted the TV mounting bracket to this one by six here. And then the Samsung box, I just zip tied on the back here. So it looks really nice and clean. And the back side is... Yeah, it just looks like that. But I used to have a gold frame on the TV actually when I first had it in here, but I felt like the gold frame actually drew so much attention to the fact that I had a TV on an easel. And so I took the frame off and I kind of like the contrast between the old easel and the more modern TV. There's like a juxtaposition that's quite nice there. I'll absolutely give this project a 10 out of 10. I feel like the only way that this wouldn't work is if you had a really old easel or an easel that was kind of like rickety. So you are going to want to make sure if you recreate this project that your easel is supportive. It has a large base to it so that your TV can't topple. But I'll link some below from Amazon that you can utilize as well if you want to recreate a similar look. Project number three was one I was going to save till the end of the video because I really do feel like it's probably the one that most of you are wondering about, most curious about, and that is because if you watched my small bathroom makeover, you would see that I actually plastered over the top of the tile in my bath. So let me pop up the before and after of this bathroom quickly for you guys and share with you that I did not do any demo in this bathroom at all. I actually went right over the top of the previous tile with plaster. And I know some of you are like, what are you talking about? Is that allowed? It absolutely is because there is a product made specifically for it. And this product is by a brand called Mioted. It is called Concreta. I'll put it on the screen for you. It went so insanely viral, you guys, on every single platform. And I'm not saying this as like, oh, it went so viral. I'm so popular. Like, no, it just was such a cool project and such an innovative idea. And I loved it. But then I found out that it's fully waterproof and you can use it in showers. So we ended up slapping it all over the entire bathroom, um, plastering it by hand in the shower, on the shower floor, on the ceiling, absolutely everywhere in the bathroom, transform the entire thing. And another thing I have to answer that goes hand in hand with this is that this bathroom is a everyday use bathroom. Like Marie, my roommate, she does shower in this bathroom every single day. So the shower definitely does get utilized. And so many people were like, this is all gonna chip off, it's gonna break. And let me share it with you guys a little over a year later. Here we are in the guest room and leading right into Marie's bathroom. This is the Concreta plaster that I applied to all the walls and the shower as well. So this is kind of a full overview of what it looks like. This is a pretty small bathroom and it has coved ceilings as well, which I love. And that's kind of why I wanted the Concreta to also transfer up. And I think it looks so nice. This is kind of a little look all around. I also ended up applying it to the chair rail molding that was done with the tile before. So if you guys also recall, there used to be a door right here, like a really big door that led into the laundry room. It was right in front of me. Oh my gosh, look at the toilet paper just blowing. And I covered that up and then it used a just chair rail piece of molding out of wood and replicated the same profile. So you can kind of see the tiniest bit of like 
maybe right there where that's like the tile. Um, but I mean, I think I did a pretty good job of masking it. But of course, the shower. This is where Marie actually takes a shower. Um, and this is kind of what it is looking like at the moment. There definitely are some random little hairs and pieces of like lint in the kind of edges there, but it has not cracked, peeled away slipped, budged, literally nothing. I can't even really get it off of the window here. As you can see, this is literally like, I mean, can you see that? I mean, Marie uses a shower every single day. Now, as you can see, it's still in really great condition. We'll say for sure that the floor might have a tiny bit of discoloration, but I think if I went in and scrubbed it with a cleaner, it'd probably come off. I'm not gonna do that at the moment though, just because I wanna give you guys like a real look. It's really hard to focus on the plaster on the ground because it doesn't have really anything to focus on, but I hope you can see. <laughs> look at Winston, you guys. I'm just over here filming. Oh, he's so cute. The bed's covered with clothing in the guest room, but look how pretty. Oh my gosh. So to be completely honest with you, I would give this a 11 out of 10 because it is just such a great product. I've used it and I've wanted to use it in so many different facets, even outside of like bathroom spaces. I can see this used on like bars, covering built-ins with it. I feel like there's just like a lot of opportunity for this product to be used. I also want to mention that I wanted to try this product out in here because I had never seen anything like it before and I wanted to give it a test on my own. I create content. I always love sharing with you guys new and innovative materials, tools, supplies, whatever makes your life easier. I do not want to have to demo all the tile in the shower, all the shower walls, have it all completely like hot mopped again. All of this would have had to have been broken out, completely re-drywalled. All of it would have had to been like prepared for a bathroom space. And that would have costed because I can't do that myself, like thousands and thousands of dollars. So the alternative of this was so much quicker. I did it myself. I love it. It's just such a cool product. So yeah, this is a little over a year after install and it is still going strong. And I just don't ever see this product breaking off these walls. For product number four, we are taking a step back in time, back to probably one of the first makeovers I did in this home, which if you recall back to my movie room makeover, which is actually downstairs. It is the dining room of the duplex that I live in. And I converted it into kind of like a movie theater-esque room. And the reason I did this was because I found a couch on the street that fit this room perfectly. I had it fully reupholstered. We brought it in. I painted the room this dark moody color. And then I also found a cabinet that I was able to DIY a screen inside of. So when I found out that the screen would fit perfectly in this cabinet, I knew this room had to be like the movie cinema slash viewing room. So that's what we call it. We always call it just like the movie room or like the movie theater room. And the screen really is such a conversation starter because so many people just assume that I'm going to open up the doors on the cabinet and there's going to be a TV inside. But when I pull out the drawer, pull the screen up, people that have not seen the project before are always like mind blown. And I think it's so fun. And it's just been such a great and useful DIY that I found myself myself using all the time. Let me share with you guys what that project looks like. And this one's probably almost two years, if not a little over two years old. Here we are in the movie room, which currently has quite a bit of furniture piled up in it because I've been selling vintage furniture on my website and it's kind of turned into a storage room at the moment because I ordered too many pieces. But anyways, besides the point, this is still such a cool project and one that I want to share with you because it has served so many beautiful movie nights here at the Lone Fox home. I actually got this at a thrift store. It's a two piece hutch. So the top portion um, separates from the bottom portion. This all used to be glass and I ended up filling it with raffia cloth, which is it's hard to see, this room's pretty dark, but um, I love the way that this looks. It kind of just hides what's on the inside. So we're able to store games and cards and just blankets, movie essentials on the inside. Here's where the cool part happens. So I actually connected these drawers together. It was two individual drawers, so probably for like silverware storage or something. Connected them together with some additional spare wood that I had, and I kind of just screwed them together here. So that way they pulled out at the same time. And then I also ended up jigsawing a kind of section or chunk out of the drawer, both of the drawers. That way when I laid the actual screen across, it was able to go across the drawers and they were able to slide in. I did also have to break a tiny piece out of the front here, which once I pulled out the drawers, it was super easy. I just used a jigsaw and kind of cut in on either side. And that allows this section here to then push in. So then when you pull it all out, it comes out as one. You simply pull it up like this 
and you attach it to the screw at the top. So I just added an additional screw. And this here is how it looks like fully extended. And it is just the largest screen, you guys. I think this is probably like a 70 inch screen. And then across the way, we have the projector on the opposite wall, which projects the movie onto the screen. It's totally something you can do as well if you have a cabinet that has a long drawer or two drawers next to it. It's still functioning great. We probably opened and closed it, I mean, a hundred times at this point since um, I installed it. I would also give this one a 10 out of 10. I know I feel like I've given a lot of the projects in this video a 10 out of 10, but I mean, how do you not? This one's so innovative and fun. This one was a cool project. <laughs> My last project is another one that when I shared the original video, so many people wanted to see what it was going to look like in the future. And I got so many questions asking even months into the video if I could share an update process. So today, of course, I'm going to be doing that for you guys. And this is all about the tile in my kitchen because the tile in my kitchen, I laid it all by hand myself. Of course, Justin helped me as well, but we kind of did this in phases. The kitchen was almost broken into three sections. There was the actual kitchen itself. There was the breakfast nook, and then there was also the laundry room but all of these spaces had open doorways so the flooring had to kind of flow throughout all three but I wanted to make each room extremely special so the way that I actually did this was I ordered flooring in two different sizes but the same exact materials that way I was able to mix up the way that I actually laid the tile on the floor but the actual materiality of the tile and the finish would look similar in color and tone and all the grout would be the same however this is far more work but I really wanted an organic look throughout my kitchen and breakfast nook so I kind of haphazardly not actually haphazardly like just randomly placing but I just laid out the tile in your traditional kind of brick pattern but I didn't do it with any spacers or anything I actually laid it very organically I wanted the grout to be really thick on these I feel like that gives a look of this kind of European cobblestone outdoor yet indoor kind of vibe in your home which I love I did a herringbone pattern in the laundry room to break up the tile pattern from the kitchen and the breakfast nook I also did a border in the laundry room as well and a little kind of braided section leading from the laundry room to the kitchen and I'm so happy with how the tile work ended up turning out. But let me share with you guys what this tile looks like a little over two years later. Welcome to the kitchen and here is the kitchen tile that I installed about two years ago, I'd say. And I will say that this center area here normally has a runner rug on it. So it's the cleanest of all, but you can kind of see like how the grout has reacted since because you definitely can kind of see how it gets a little dingier on the grout mainly in the breakfast nook area. Um, so as you kind of come in here, just a little bit, it's really not bad. And as you guys know, I really want this to have kind of an indoor outdoor feel to it. So it doesn't bother me that it has a little bit of a dinginess to the grout. The tile over here also looks really nice. Like, I don't know if maybe it got a little bit more of a sealant on it. I could also try to give it another good cleaning and seal it again. I know you can reseal tile. So I did a soldier row of tile under the archway here, which I think kind of gives a little bit of added interest as opposed to just leaving it raw. It kind of gives a finished look and sort of a start to the kitchen tile, which I really like, into the laundry room where I did this detail, which is sort of like a braided detail. And then look how good it looks in here, you guys. Ah, oh, so pretty. I love the herringbone flooring. This I actually did completely butted up, so there's no grout line here. Um, I did go ahead and grout the whole thing though, but I didn't actually do any spacers. I just butted it all up, and the reason was is because it actually was way easier to lay that way. I did a border around and started it right in front of the washer and dryer, and it just kind of goes all the way around, and I love it. I still am waiting for my rail here to be finished from the guy that's creating it. Probably should have cleaned this room up a little more, but um, this is also where we store a lot of our utilitarian items, which should all be inside of the armoire, but clearly they're not. I love, love, love the tile, and I really do get so many compliments on it. Um, so I would probably give the tile a 8 out of 10, to be completely honest with you, and that is just because of the grout and how it gets a little dingier. But I wonder if I could go ahead and give it a nice good scrubbing and then maybe reseal it again with another sealer. Not mad at all about it getting dingy. It's not like 
the end of the world. I think it's still stunning. And those are some of my most viral projects I have shared here on my channel one year, if not some, almost two years after me actually installing them and sharing them here. I hope that you guys love this video and it might have answered some of the questions you've had from some of these projects that I've shared in the past. But if you do have any questions on any of the projects you've seen in this video, please leave a comment below and I will make sure to do my best to get back to you. If you've done any of these projects or you're planning to do any, let me know as well. Thank you all so, so much. Do not forget to also follow me over on Instagram and TikTok because I do share a bunch of additional content there. It is Lone Fox Home and I will catch you all in my next one. Bye guys.